What is up, Planeswalkers? Theric Six back with some more Magic the Gathering Arena. They were playing dragons. Because I like dragons. Uh, so essentially, this deck is a, like a mid rangey control list that just wants to play out a lot of dragons really fast. You'll notice that the numbers of some of these dragons are a bit wonky, and we're also not playing a dragon like Lathless. I just kind of like made the decisions of which cards to play more or less on a whim. Uh, obviously, some of them are guaranteed shoe ins like uh, the like this column here, and then of course Bolas and Niv Mizzet. But the rest of them, eh, kind of interchangeable. If you don't have the exact list here and you still want to play dragons, uh, feel free to include Lathlises or uh, more Varixes, more Bone Dragons if you don't have the Demandings or anything like that. Uh, the, the deck isn't meant to be necessarily super competitive, although it does work relatively fine just because of the strength of really uh, Nicol Bolas and Niv Mizzet. So. Uh, we have a, a lot of early game removal in order to help us get to the late game and cast our dragons. We have three Moment of Craving. I initially had some cast downs, but I found that cast downs uh, just it just didn't help enough. And uh, the super aggressive decks are really what you want to make sure you're uh, you're dealing with in the early game. Cast downs can help you against more mid range decks, but your dragons are relatively uh, good sized against those 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 decks anyway. So you know you don't really need the cast downs, especially since you do have contempts and things. Uh, so that's why we're running moment of craving. We're running two lava coil. It's possible it should be like a a, a three one split between lava coil and lightning strike. Just really so that you can deal with Phoenixes. It, it's pretty much Phoenixes and the uh, Gogori graveyard style decks. It, you want to make sure that they're not getting uh, continual value here. So I, I am running two Lava Coils. It's possible it should be a different uh, number. But I'm also running Lava Strike because we do have a decent time uh, burning down our opponent. You know, we, we are a mid-range deck, not a control deck. So we don't end the game super late. Uh, so... Sometimes we do just need uh, an extra bit to the dome, and that's why we're running Lightning Strike. It also is just a fine early creature removal spell. Three Spit Flames are a fantastic <laughs> early creature removal spell. Uh, don't worry too much about trying to use its uh, secondary ability when another dragon enters. You should still try your best to play on curve in situations that are really good. But one of the reasons that Spit Flame is really fantastic is that you are able to potentially get extra value on the card. So, you know, you Spit Flame something early uh, on turn five, you know, you play a four mana dragon, get a Spit Flame back. And it just, it's just helpful uh, continuing on later into the game. It helps you kill things uh, with your dragons as blockers because of the instant speed. It's just a really nice value card. Four, four Sarkins. Why are we running four of a, a legendary Planeswalker? It's similar with uh, Nicol Bolas. Because uh, it's really good, so we want to see it every game. <laughs> And it's really good, so people are going to kill it, so we might need duplicates of it pretty much every game. <laughs> so that's why we're running four. Um, it's actually really great. It synergizes really well with Spit Flame. So it's plus one. You can discard a card, and you can just like discard a Spit Flame, and then get it back next turn when you get two extra mana. In In many games, or in a decent number of games, I should say, you can go turn two removal spell, turn three Sarkin, into turn four niv -Mizzet. If... I've had plenty, I think it was like two or three, and that's plenty for me, plenty of games against Control where they just like can't, you can't deal with that. You can't deal with a turn four Niv-Mizzet. It can't be countered, so even if they hold up mana to counter it, right, you have just this insane uh, tempo advantage here. It's just, uh, it's just so good. And then, of course, you could ultimate. It, you should almost never ultimate with this card, I don't think. You probably should have won by that time. That's like four turns having Sarkin out. But, it, you know, it's it's an option. Dragon's Horde is helpful in this deck to, one, fix mana, kind of. The the mana situation right now is, I think, pretty fine. Uh, it's possible you might want to introduce some colorless lands in order to uh, have some utility, but as of right now, I think the mana base is fine. Uh, and Dragon's Horde really uh, just acts as a slight ramp, you know, ramp from three to five, because we have uh, plenty of uh, five drop dragons. And it also helps us to stay in the game. You know, if we're casting these spells... Uh, then we might, you know, they might die to things. We might need to block with them and they end up dying. Uh, so you want to just make sure you can, you know, stay in the game by drawing more cards. And that's just, just pretty helpful. And then we get to some, uh, you know, talk about dragons last. We're going to Ritual Soot. All of our creatures are more than four or more. So Ritual Soot doesn't hit any of our creatures. And we will want to make sure that we don't get overrun by tiny little dweebs. Vrasa's Contempt helps us to kill Planeswalkers as well as any other pesky creature that our lower game removal spell does not deal with. So onto our dragons. We're running two Variks Bladewing. Variks is a nice card early because it is just a four mana four four with flying, which is fine. But it also gives us the option of casting it for seven for two four fours, which triggers Dragon's Horde twice, which is very nice. Nicobolus is just fantastic. If it resolves, your opponent is le at least going to discard a card, and if they remove it, you're going to get a, at minimum a two-for-one, which is just very helpful. Late game, you could theoretically uh, 
pay seven mana to, to activate this card's ability, but it, it's not likely going to happen. Uh, unfortunately, Sarkin only counts for sp casting dragon spells, not for using it on their abilities as well. I know some cards in Magic History have done that, but unfortunately, this one is not one. For Demanding Dragons, this card doesn't see a ton of play right now. It, it saw a little bit of play in Arena for the previous rotation, and I think the reason is just the prevalence of super go-wide strategies. When your opponent can just sack a 1-1 one, one or a 2-2, two, two, it, it doesn't really help that much being a 5-mana five 5-5. Five, five. It is relatively weak in that regard, but if you are playing against, like, for example, a control player, and they don't have a counterspell for this at the time, this is still, like, a really good card to just play out and deal 5 damage to them. I know it's, like, essentially a Lava Axe, but 5 damage is 5 damage. <laughs> Bone Dragon is a nice include. We don't actually put a ton of cards in our bin fast enough for us to really want to uh, focus on using this card. But later in the game, you know, you can discard this to, to Sark and Fireblood to get something like a Niv-Mizzet instead. Uh, you can theoretically just, try, like, get back in the game by exiling some stuff. So that's why we run it as a one of. I'm hoping that we get some, like, Rakdos Dragon, although, frankly, I don't really see that happening. Um, and then, of course, Niv-Mizzet is just... it's it, it just eats control decks alive, pretty much. <laughs> If your opponent doesn't have, like, a, a Chupacabra or, um, like, an Elders Reborn, pretty much anything that doesn't kill it and isn't an instant sorcery, you're, you're just going to get insane value off of this card. And, as I said, you can ramp into it on turn 4 with Sarkin or um, turn 5 with Dragon's Horde. So, it's, it's just a, a really nice spell that you can theoretically get uh, a lot earlier than you should. And then this is our mana situation. Now, I'm only going to be playing best of ones, but I figured I would put together a sideboard just to show you guys what I think would be a good sideboard. And you will notice that it does seem really similar to my uh, Grisha's control list. And that's just because that's pretty much what the deck is similar to. Uh, it, it is a control mid midrange deck in that you're likely going to be the control in most matchups other than heavy control. So we're running three duress. This is for, you know, control decks. One, Disdainful Stroke. This is for control decks, but also potentially a, a, a single bring in against Mono Red if you know that they run Experimental Frenzy. This deck can't actually deal with a Frenzy after it's resolved, so it's possible that you're going to want to bring this in. I don't actually know for certain if it's a good plan to do that because you're going to still want your removal and you're going to want your like board wipes to deal with your creatures. So, you know, what, what do you end up taking out? Do you end up starting to take out your dragons and then like, you know, you just run out of things to do? So I'm not entirely sure about uh, bringing it in for there, but it also is just good against the control matchups. Same with the gate, uh, very similar to the Disdainful Stroke. It's possible that you bring this in against the Mono Red Coffee deck, and this is actually easier to bring in, I think, uh, than Disdainful Stroke, because at the very least, you can trade this for a burn spell, but being able to hit a uh, Experimental Frenzy with this is, is very helpful. And then, of course, it comes in against control. Against the super wide tokeny strategies, you bring Golden Demise. Again, <laughs> A lot, of, a lot of hate against control. The, the deck does have a decent uh, first game against aggro as long as you can draw your lands well. Um, so that's that's why we kind of uh, skew our sideboard heavily against control, just because we are just playing, like, on-curve dragons, and if our opponent does have counter spells and we don't have Niv-Mizzet, it's going to be relatively difficult to uh, end the game. So Thief of Sanity is a really nice bring-in here against uh, both aggro and, or er, both control and uh, mid-range decks. We, we bring it in, we play it early, and we just annoy the hell out of our opponent. And then, of course, Unmoored Ego for any of those pesky decks that you just... There's a specific card that you just don't want to deal with. Yeah, I mean, that's that's, that's pretty much it. We're going to go ahead and hop in some best of ones. Why are we doing best of ones? Well, because I want to. I've been doing a lot of best of threes recently, and I just want to make sure that uh, the, the content is varied. I forgot to meet myself. My apologies. And you got to stay hydrated when you talk. Going against Brick Racer or Karn. I think I, I want to say Karn. I want to say Karn and Vivian are the, the two characters I see the most. The two avatars I see the most. This is not a good hand. It's not a bad hand. It's like the okayest of hands. And of course, I'm saying this because we're going second. If we were going first, this is an immediate mulligan. Um, so we, we, functionally, we functionally don't have these cards in hand. I would consider, since we're going second, that we do have these cards, and if we have this card, we kind of have this one. It's an it's an okay hand. I'm very skeptical about keeping it. We do only run 24 lands. Um, I, I think we should mulligan. If, if one of these were a shock land, I think I'd be more inclined to keep it, but I am going to mulligan. This is, this is arguably worse. But we do have Moment of Craving, which can help us stay in the game. And Ritual of Soot does the same. So I guess I'll keep this. 
Dragon Tord. Um, no, I, I think I do have to get rid of Dragon Tord in in favor of just a, another land. Yep, yeah, mono red. Very unfortunate. Ow. Well, that is a bad draw. See what their follow-up is. Probably, uh... Okay. So this might be the burn deck. Yeah, really, uh, really bad. Really bad draws here. I, I guess I should have mulliganed again. Not entirely sure. If they follow this up with Chain Whirler, it's going to be kind of bad. Oh, there's another Pyromancer. Alright, so we do have Moment of Craving, which is helpful. I'd like to start drawing lands, please. Alright, so we did get a land. That's very helpful. And we'll just pass the turn. We might get burned here with a Wizard's Lightning. Yeah, I mean, our opponent has something they can do. So. I, I suspect a, a Lightning or a Shock. Yeah, Shock. Cool. Alright, they're on four. And we're going to go ahead and moment of craving one of these Pyromancers here. Alright, we're down to five. Real bad. And uh, we have nothing to play, so we're dead. Real, real bad draw, unfortunately. Uh, possible I should have just mulliganed again. Yep, we're dead. Dang it. Eh. Remember in the in the in the deck tech where I said we have a decent uh, game one against aggro when we draw lands right. <laughs> Very important stipulation there. Today I want to talk about the fifth card problem. I've talked about it a little bit recently, I'll talk about it some more. Scribbles, I've played against you before. I think several times. I think I've played against Scribbles, Scribbles a lot. This is a much better hand. And the reason it's a much better hand is because we have guaranteed mana, at least two things to do with it, and if we get one more land, we have Bolas as well. This is a much better hand. We are going second. Hopefully this is not a red deck. It doesn't appear to be. Very nice. We are going to lead off with a Steam Vents. I don't think it actually matters. Because we are likely going to have to have this coming untapped anyway. Ooh, Golgari. All right. Branch Walker. Sure. I just land. That's fine. Um, I'm going to play this tapped. Do I want to play this tapped? I guess I could hit a Jade Light Ranger with Moment of Craving. I guess I'll play this untapped. We do need one more land still. <laughs> um, so the fifth card problem. I think I I've heard um I've heard this somewhere else. So I don't think it's just something like I thought of myself. Um, but essentially, what I think they could do is utilize the wild card track for the fifth card problems. Yay. Okay, cool. All right. So we, we should be fine now. Because if nothing else, we have Nicol Balls. And uh, Dragon Horde can draw us a card the following turn. So we should be okay. Branch Walker, sure. Uh, I, I guess they're looking for lands. Yep, they found it. Uh, but yeah, so essentially, when you open a fifth card, it gives you some amount of uh, progress on the applicable wild card track. Um, so I could actually Dragon Horde here and then Lava Coil this, and I think I want to do that. I think I think this is probably a better play. Not entirely sure. Next turn definitely is going to be Nicobolus, uh, kind of baiting out a Chupacabra. I assume my opponent would uh, would do that. So a lot of a lot, not not what I wanted to see. A lot of explore going, <laughs> a lot of explore going on. So luckily my opponent hasn't been super uh, aggressive to me here. I got a Catacomb. Catacomb is nice. I do think we still play Bolus. We could Demanding Dragon. I like the idea of drawing two cards, though. Niv-Mizzet, I don't think it's safe to play. Uh, my, my opponent is, is playing a green-black deck, almost certainly playing Chupacabra. Uh, 
I don't think Demanding Dragon is, is necessary here. I think I think I want to just you know attack their hand, force them to play out of Chupacabra, draw some cards. Guard of Playcrafter. Yeah, that I mean that that tells me they have another such effect. So yeah. Or they're gonna kill it now. No, they're just reading things, I guess. Um So yeah, so let's say you open a fifth copy of a mythic, and you are currently on the mythic wildcard track. That should give you one... So, so like, theoretically, they could change the exact numbers. But I think it's reasonable if it just gives you one notch. I think it's six total notches on all the wildcard tracks. So it gives you one notch, right? If you're on the Mythic wildcard track and you open... I can't I can't do anything. What, what are you talking about? Um... Um... Excuse me, what? I... What? What? I'm... I'm online. I... I'm... On Chrome, right now. What the heck, dude? Arena's having some connection problems. This is... This is not the first time this has happened. Cool, reconnect, thanks. I really hope I cast my... My Nicol Bolas there. What the heck, dude? I think he's Jace now. No. Sarkin, sure. Oh, that's so stupid. Alright, Chupacabra. Sure. That's fine. So I, I suspected that was going to happen. I am taking a lot of damage here. Let me draw some cards. Soul Falls is fine. Throw some cards. Another nickel balls. I am very glad that I drew that moment of craving. I don't know if it's correct to demanding dragon. Uh, I can't Niv. No, Niv doesn't. Uh... I mean, I... So they would need another Chupacabra or a similar effect. I played a land this turn. So I couldn't, like... Draw a card. Nah, yeah, I wouldn't have mana for that anyway. I think I would rather just eat their hand still. This leaves up a blocker. I can moment of craving. Let's see what they discard here. They're on five. Oh wow, all creatures. All creatures in the graveyard. <laughs> Our, uh, or all, all cards in the graveyard are creatures, so. And Izoni here would be pretty bad. Yeah, Playcrafter is bad. Um, I'm still alive. I'm at one. Unless, of course, my opponent decides to sack something else. No, no. Alright, so. Next turn. And I think I, I think I want to draw this here. Okay, Ritual of Soot doesn't save me. Sulfur Falls actually might, because I can Niv and kill these two, thanks to this. But I'm going to do it instant speed. I need my opponent not to have removal from my Niv. Alright. So I'm going to block here. And then I'm going to draw a card. Ping that. And draw another card. My opponent, uh, if they have Izoni, I have removal for it. I have Ritual of Soot. <sighs> oh, man. I, I need to gain some life. Let's do this. Um, let's play another Dragon's Horde. And then let's play a Demanding Dragon. Black Green probably doesn't have haste. And let's attack in for some damage. <laughs> Alright, back to the wildcard track after all that nonsense. Okay. 
So if you're on the Mythic Rare wildcard track uh, and you open a rare duplicate, you should get two on that. Um, if you're on the rare wild track and you open a rare, you should get one. And if you open a mythic, you should get two. Uh, if you're on the, for, for the uncommon one, if you open a common, you should get two. And if you open an uncommon, you should get one. That, that like, isn't great, but I think, I think it gives more wild cards overall than the current vault system. It also utilizes the wild card track. I think the wild card track is a really nice implementation. Uh, I think, I think it's a really cool system that they can still use for the rest of these packs. I think, you know, it, it, yes, technically you could abuse the system, but you're still, it's still six rares on their rare wildcard track. Snoopy Locust. That's a weird name. Uh, it's still six rares to get a single rare. <laughs> like, it's not generous at all. Uh, I'll keep this hand. We have, we have Moment of Craving. We have two lands that can come in untapped for sure. And uh, if, with one more land... Why? Why the heck is my are my hands have they, have they been just trash? I, I need to double check that I have twenty four lands because I'm supposed to. All right, green of some sort might be uh, mono green, might be Golgari. Golgari. Well, I have a moment of craving. I'll take two here. Um, I want to make sure I can kill a Jade Light Ranger uh, because that can that can get larger. So, ow! Let's see if you play a Ranger. Ah, oh, Midnight Reaper. Um, I guess I'll just a moment of craving the Reaper. Give me a land. I hate you. I, I guess I shouldn't be keeping two landers with Dragon Tords. Eh, I, I, these hands have been actually bad. And I don't know why. Elf, sure. Another branch walker, sure. I can still kill that if it gets large. I assume they're keeping that on top. Nope. They might think I'm control, I guess. Thank you. I'm not control, I'm playing dragons. So if we draw an untapped land. Next turn, we could dragon sword lava coil. Which I don't hate. My opponent isn't, uh, luckily, putting too much pressure on us. So. Doom Whisper. Uh, that needs to die. Uh, I don't have enough mana to deal with that. One, two, three. Oh, yes, I do. Cool. I'm using, like, two cards to get rid of one. Uh, don't usually see Doom Whisper in these styles of decks, though. My opponent is going to be able to uh, scry or surveil as much as they would like. Kind of lame, but eh. next turn I can get the spit flame back, which is helpful. I'm just dumping stuff in there, looking for something. I assume like a planeswalker. Put both in again. You gonna keep going? Nope. So they, they didn't... I believe they didn't actually choose to keep something on top. Because I, I think it was going in by twos every time. So They have a blind draw here. Down to 12. Sure. 12 is fine. Um, if my opponent has a freaking Nullhead Ferox in their hand, the salt is going to be incredible. Because, <laughs> like, this is, this is like actual Explorer Gogari. And those decks... I mean, typically those decks don't play Doom Whisper. Uh, or at least they haven't in the past. Why'd you attack with the... If you can... I don't know. Um, I do think that I Nicol Bolas and draw my Spit Flame back. I want to be able to block things. It's possible I should actually just not care about the Spit Flame since I have two more in my hand. And I should just draw a card. I think it's better to just draw a card. 
Yeah, I, I think I think it's correct to draw. I'm gonna decline. I'm gonna draw now because it could be a a land. Yep. So next turn, I can double spit flame if I'd like. So I could like kill the midnight reaper. Um. Uh, Playcrafter, yep. I still gonna get a little rid of elves, yep. I need. I would love. I would love a Niv Mizzet. It'd be great. But I can. I can at least kill things. So that has to die first. Niv is here, but Niv would be all of my stuff. Can I Dragon's Horde? No, I can Dragon's Horde and kill one thing. But killing one thing leaves me dead. So I need to spit flame into spit flame. Yeah, very unfortunate. Um, I guess I could do it instant speed. Does that matter? Hmm. I guess it might. It might change what they decide to do. So I mean, I'm on a pretty rocky road here. Um, go ahead and hit... Nair Reaper first, because we don't want them drawing a bunch of cards, just the one. We go down to two. Ow. Ritual of Soot helps. So if they play out some nonsense, I could uh, draw a Ritual of Soot and kill them. Yeah, it, it's correct for them not to uh, not to attack here. Unfortunately. Um, let's see. So if I did this, it'd be one, two, three, four, five. Damn. So yeah, unfortunately, because of the way my blue mana situation has worked out, I can't actually win this game. Uh, darn. Let's so the game screwed over by mana. I'm gonna check the freaking deck because I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure I have 24. Yeah. What the heck? Why have I been getting bad hands? I guess, I guess technically I've just been keeping bad hands, so. Card Bandit, don't steal my cards. Alright, this is a good hand. We're going second again. Opponent's on white of some sort. We've got some nice removal, some ramp potentially. Boros. That is going to be a very difficult card to deal with. Fudge. Only I didn't say fudge. Okay. Uh, the reason we do this is because of uh, Goblin War Boss or whatever. Alright, cool. So we're only going to take three damage here. And if they play something else... Gonna, okay, they didn't play anything else, so that's nice. Moment of Craving, thank you! Um, which means we are going to just have this come in tapped and pass the turn. We can Moment of Craving this, which is really helpful. Um, it's an easy way to get rid of it. They could, ha I, they could have a Pump Spell, but they don't. Cool. Card is relative. Uh, they didn't have anything else. Yes! This is exactly what we want. And now we have Lightning Strike held up still. Cool. And next turn we can play a land, play a dragon, draw some cards, play another dragon, draw some more cards. It's it's actual good. They get Aurelia? Yeah, Aurelia is a thing. But my dragon is big enough to kill Aurelia. So I don't care. Um, we're going to play a Sulfur Falls. And we're going to play a Demanding Dragon. I assume they're going to take the five. Not, not really a reason to sack Aurelia unless they have another one in their hand. Alright, yep. And we, we block here pretty much every time. Um, even if they have some sort of trick, we have another Demanding Dragon. I, I'm not too worried about uh, not blocking. It is a... They does get first strike, right? No, just vigilance and uh Alright, that's rude. I guess I can't block. That's fine, we're only gonna take four. 
Sure, that's fine. And we have another Demanding Dragon. Is it Vigilance right? Yeah. Vigilance and Trample. Draw a card. I would I would love a Niv. Uh, uh, Nicobolus is pretty good. Um... Two, three, four, five. So I could I could kick Varix. I like the idea of kick Varix. Because I could double block. Um, and I'd only lose one, unless of course they have a response, which is still fine because I'm only using a single card. I, th I like the idea of kick Varix. Get, get two counters on Dragon's Horde. I have two bros. Double block. Yeah, no, that's good. If they remove one of them, I could attack into Aurelia. If they decide to take the bait, then I can uh, go ahead and uh, use Lava Coil or Lightning Strike. Most likely Lightning Strike because uh, this deck very well could just be playing Rekindling Phoenix and not have it. Lyra, hello, hello. I still block that. what I thought. Um, so here... Here I think I draw a card first. I think I lightning strike Lyra. <laughs> or, I think I use both on Lyra. Um, but yeah, let's let's draw a card. Vraska's Contempt, even better. Now we only won for one. Two, three. Yes, yeah, Sarkin can only be used for that, so... Let's do that there. And we have no real reason to attack. Our creatures don't have Vigilance. Um, I guess actually, you know what? We, we're doing 8 damage. They're only doing 4. I think it actually is fine to attack here. Um, if they decide to block, then we can Lightning Strike. Sweet. So this, this is actually super good for us. Goodbye. So long. Farewell. Alveder saying goodbye. I didn't watch Sound of Music, alright. I just know some of the songs. <laughs> Not that it's bad to watch Sound of Music. I just don't care. <laughs> I, I I will say, I, I like the animations. Um, am I going to just do the same thing? Second first name is the first? F freaking Lava Coil you? Yeah, come at me, bro. Like, it's eight damage. There's no way they're going to go to three. I guess, I guess because of that, I should have used Lava Coil last turn. Oh, what a fool. And let us play Demanding Dragon. I, why? Arena, why are you doing this to me? I cast a card. Why? <laughs> Alright, you know what? I can't be too mad, because at least it happened fast this time. <laughs> Arena needs... It, like, I've said this before, and I'll say it again until it's farkling fixed. Apparently, avatars don't matter. Arena needs to have an indicator for when... The, for when the game says that you don't have a uh, connection. I have internet connection right now. I have Chrome on, and I load pages, right? For whatever reason, Arena's being trash. <laughs> but Arena needs to have some sort of indication somewhere that you're losing out on, um, on connection, right? Uh, Elder Scrolls Legends is one that I know has... Uh, like a module one where if it's if it's like fine but like kind of getting a bit sparse it'll like be like yellow and then when it's red it's like oh you're probably going to lose connection soon or you've already lost connection and you can do things to, to do with that so it's just it's just so annoying but while we're here i want to uh, you know just rephrase what i was talking about so on the wildcard track you know there's six things for each if i if i already had this plaka worm uh it would give me one for the pack and then one more one more for the plaka worm if this was a mythic that i had two of it would give me one for the pack and then two for that so that's that's, that's like my idea for what could be done let me know uh, what you guys think about the wild track uh solution i guess to the uh the, the fifth card problem 
I'd like to thank Easy Mode, Dizzy Fam, Radberry, Kyoshin, Ox, Daniel, Flower Child, Zaraga, and Mad Coast Bad for their support over on Patreon. If you'd like to join them in supporting the channel, you'll find links to that in the description below. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this dragony, dragony video. If you did, go and tap that like button, cast a comment to the comment section down below, and then uh, add a description to your, your mana pool. And until next time, uh, all will be one. <laughs> I have no idea why I just did that, but I did. Uh, you know, don't donate dragons.